In this video, we are going to take a look at a method called max, which we're using to determine the max of two different numbers. Okay, it has two parameters here. The max method returns an integer to us. Up here in our main method, we're establishing a couple of variables, i and j. We're setting them equal to 5 and 2, and then we're calling max with i and j as the arguments. So i will be 5 and j will be 2. Those arguments will get passed into the parameters num1 and num2. So they, num1 will be 5 and num2 will be 2. When that method gets done running, we're storing the result in this variable called k. Now, in our last video, when our values were returned, we printed them directly to the screen. It's important to remember when you call a method, if it's a value returning method, you have to do something with the information that is returned. In the last video, we printed the information out to the screen. In this video, we're storing the result from given back to us from this max method into a variable called k, and then we can use it down here. Uh, and that we, we're using it right here. We're using k. Uh, so if, if you need to use it more than once, or you don't want to print it directly out, you have to store the result in some kind of variable. And that's what's happening here. So as this runs, we set i to 5. We set j equal to 2. Then the max method gets called with 5 and 2, which are the values of i and j. 5 gets stored in number 1, 2 gets stored in number 2. We test to see which one's bigger. Is 5 greater than 2? Because that was what was stored, right? Is 5 greater than 2? It is. So our result is going to be set to the value of 5, which was number 1. It won't run, we won't do the else statement because this part was true. And then we're going to return the bigger number, which was 5. It gets returned back to the place where we called it, stored in the variable k, and then here we can print out the maximum between i and j is k. Um, I think I'm missing a curly brace down here. So let's execute this program, and we can say that the maximum difference, the maximum between 5 and 2 is 5, because 5 is bigger than 2. But what I want to do is actually run this and trace the execution using our debugging tools so we can watch this process as it happens. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here right at the very first line uh, that gets executed in our main method, uh, the i equal 5. And we'll go ahead and run this with debugging. And it's the green line here indicates this is the next line that's going to run. I am going to use step over. Okay. Now, when I do that, I'm not seeing my variables here. So I'm going to go up to window and I am going to go down to debugging and I want to see now uh, let's do the variables window. So now my variables window pops up and I can see here my variable i is set to five because I want to I want to watch these values as we go through here. Okay. So if you don't see when you're in debugging, if you don't see your variables window, you can go to window under debugging and see different windows that are available for us in debugging. So I turned on the variables window. All right, so i is set to five. We're going to go ahead and run J. I'm going to do step over. Okay, So now we can see J here is set to 2. And then the next line that's going to be executed involves this method call. Now I'm going to step over this time so you can watch what happens. I stepped over it. And you can see that K now is set to 5. We got our result K. When I said step over, the question is, what am I stepping over? And what I stepped over is this method call. Okay. So we didn't trace the program's execution down through this method. But if I'm using a method and I'm not sure if it's working and I need to check it, I do want to trace through this method. So let's restart this. And this time, I'm going to start it with debugging again. 
my variables window is up this time. But instead of using step over, I'm going to use step into. And step into means we're going to follow any method calls that may be there. Now, I don't always want to use step into because I really don't want to go out and troubleshoot Java's print line statement. But I do want to troubleshoot my method. So I'm going to go ahead and use step into for my next one because it didn't have a method call and it really didn't matter. Okay, so there's I set to five, step into. Okay, J is now set to two. Now when I click step into, instead, it's going to follow the execution. We're going to jump down here to max. So let's go ahead, step into. And now I'm down here into the max method that we created. Number one, we can, if we hover over it, we can see number one is set to five. Number two is set to two. So those, those values got passed into these parameters down here. The more correct way would say the arguments were passed into the parameters. And now we're getting ready to do is five greater than two. Uh, so I'll go ahead and step into th this results going to run. Okay. And then we're going to return the result, which is five. And it comes back here with the result returned to us. Okay, K is not known yet, but as soon as I hit step into, okay, we can look at K and K is equal to five. So the, the result of this was set to K. Our program flow returned back up to the point where this had been called, set the value of K. The next line we're going to run is print line. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit step into so you can see what's gonna happen here. And now it took me to Java's print stream class and I'm going to go through the whole print line. Well, I know there's nothing wrong with Java's print line code. There's no reason for me to troubleshoot that. But besides, looks at it, there's this class has, well, we're on at least 1,033 lines and a whole lot more than that. Okay. So I don't really want to step into the Java code when I'm troubleshooting. If you accidentally do that, it's okay. You don't have to sit here and trace through this one line at a time. There is a button up here called step out that will take you right back. And then we're right at the end of our program. Oh, I'm going to just go ahead and use step over and our program prints out the result that we expected. Okay. So be careful when you're doing your, when you're doing your debugging, please try this because this is how you find problems in your code. You have to be familiar with the debugging tools. So let me do this one more time, just like I would do it if I was actually debugging. So I would start here. I would do, I would probably do step over, step over. And now I'm getting to the point where I have to make a decision. There is a method call here. Do I want to follow and trace it? I do. So I step into, I'm stepping into my method. I'm watching the results. Five is greater than two. That means this shit line should run next. I can go ahead and use step over here. Okay. Step over again. The result got set. The answer is five. That's exactly what I expected. I'm going to use step over again. I'm coming up here. We're getting ready to set K. K got set to five. That's exactly what I expected. The next thing that's going to do is this print line. I don't want to follow code execution into this print line method. So I'm going to use step over. And the output got printed and our debugging is over. Um, and everything works just fine. So be careful with your debugging tools. Uh, know that when you call a method, it goes down and executes that method and then returns right back to the point where it was called and does whatever it needs to do with the results. In this case, we set int k equal to those results.